we're going to take a look at three different forms of row level validation. The term here row level means that we are trying to validate a row or the information inside of a row whenever it is being inserted or updated in a table. The three ways in which we can validate a row is to make sure that a given value inside of it is defined. We can make sure that a value inside the row is unique inside of its column. And finally, we can apply a little bit more flexible validation using greater than, less than, equal to, and so on. We can make sure that some given value is maybe less than another value, or some value is greater than another value, or equal to some string or something like that. So we're going to take a look at examples of all three of these different row level validations. To get started, however, we're going to first create a table without any validation on it whatsoever. We're then going to take a look at how bad data we could very easily insert into it. So the table we're going to create is going to be the same products table because that's served us pretty well so far. So we're going to create a products table inside of a database. We're then going to immediately try to insert some bad data into it. And we're going to realize really quickly, oh yeah, we can very easily put in some weird values into the products table. Now, before we can create this table at all, we have to create a new database inside of our local Postgres server. We don't technically have to create a new database. When we created this Postgres server a couple of videos ago, remember if you're on Windows or Linux, you probably only have that Postgres database. And if you're on Mac, you probably have some additional database named after your username. We could very easily make use of either of these two databases. But rather than stuffing a whole bunch of data in there and then having to delete it later on, let's just create a separate database right now. We'll create a table inside of it and then we can very easily clean up that database later on inside the course if we want to. So I'm going to create a new database by right-clicking on database, going to create, and then database. We're then asked to enter a name. So in our case, we'll just call this one simply validation, because that's essentially what we're trying to figure out here, a little bit more on validation. I'll then click save, and that's pretty much it. So now right away, we can right click on validation, click on query tool, and then we can start to write in some SQL that's going to be ran against specifically the validation database. Whenever we open up this query tool, we're always connecting to a very specific database. So in my case, I can connect to validation, SG or Postgres. Whatever SQL I write out and execute, it'll be executed against that particular database. So for example, right now, you can see on this tab on the top right hand side, I'm connected specifically to the validation database. If I try to create any tables, insert any rows, anything like that, it's all going to modify data only inside of validation. From inside of this database, I cannot somehow write some SQL that's going to instead connect over to say the SG or Postgres database. So we always need to make sure that whenever we open up these little query tools, we are always opening it and selecting the appropriate database that we're trying to work with at that given point in time. Okay, so now that we've got this open and we're definitely connected to our new validation database, we're gonna write out some SQL to create that products table. We're going to create it with the same structure as what we had before. So we'll do a create table products, blah, blah, blah. You get the idea. We'll do create table products. Then we're going to have a column in here called ID of type serial, and we'll say this is supposed to be a primary key. I then want a name for my product, which will be a varchar40. I want a department to be a varchar40. I want a price that's going to be an integer. And then a weight, that will be an integer as well. Okay, let's go ahead and run this. And there we go. Now, if you're curious, if you want to see the definition of this table, we can expand validation right here. And then we're going to do a little bit of hunting. We're going to find schemas and expand it. We'll find public and expand it. And then finally, we'll find tables right here. Inside of tables, we can see our new products table right there. If we want to manually view all the data inside of it, we can right click on products and then click on view slash edit. And we could take a look at all rows, the first 100, last 100, or apply some kind of filter. In this case, we don't have any data inside the table right now, so I'm going to select all rows. We'll then see a new interface come up. And so now we can see all the different columns inside of our table. Right now, there are no rows inside of it. 
But as soon as we start to add some data, we're going to see rows appear right here. Let's add one row to this table right away, just so we can see some information appear. So I'm going to go up to the top right hand side where I've got the query tool window still open. Here's the tab for it right here. So that's the SQL we just wrote a moment ago. And we're going to insert one row into the products table. Remember, we can do that by writing out insert into products. We'll then write out the columns that we're going to provide. So we're going to provide the columns name, department, price, weight. We'll then write out values. And then inside of one set of parentheses, we'll put all the values we want to insert for this row. So for right now, let's put in something like shirt. I'll provide a department of clothes, about a price of 20, and a weight of 1. We'll then play that. Okay, looks like the insert was successful. So now we can go and take a look at the products table, either by once again right-clicking on products right there, or alternatively, we can go up to the right-hand top menu up here where we've got all these different open tabs. So I can select the tab for the products table. We don't see any information on here right now. We have to rerun this query that was generated to view all the information inside the table. So to refresh the information inside this table, we'll click the play button. And there we go. We can now see our record right there. All right. Now, I just want to point out that when we were kind of clicking around and trying to find the products table on the left-hand side, there's a lot of stuff in here, right? We had to hunt through database and then find the schemas thing and then this public thing. And then inside this public schema, there's collations, domains, functions, foreign tables, and finally tables right there. So there's a lot of stuff going on inside of PG Admin. You're going to eventually get a better idea of what a lot of the stuff is, but for right now, let's just focus on tables. Okay, so now that we've created this table and we've seen how we can insert data into it, and how we can very easily view the data that's in there as well, let's start to add some kind of bad looking data in the next video, and we'll figure out how we can add in some validation.